In this video, we're going to calculate functions for the rotation and deflection of any point along a beam by way of an example. The example we're choosing is a simply supported beam with a UDL applied across the entire length L of this beam. So we have beam AB, length of L and the UDL little w. Before we go into the example, it's useful just to remind ourselves of the equation we've derived for the deflection that relates the deflections to the moment, the Young's modulus, so the material properties and the geometric properties, the second moment of area. And that function, remind ourselves, is that dv by dx equals integral of m over e i dx or we could get that v equals the double integral of m over e i dx and both of those functions that we're going to use were actually developed previously from a function relating to the double differential of the deflection. So, and both of these equations, as we say, came from the single relationship that we derived, which was d2v by dx squared equals m over ei. So in order to derive our deflections or our rotation, which I can also write as theta rather than dv by dx, what we need to do is calculate first our bending moment as a function of x along the beam. We're going to assume for this example that e and i are constants. So the first thing we need to do from statics to calculate the bending moment function is first of all get the reaction forces. So to get the reactions we need to draw quickly a free body diagram of the entire beam. So we have a UDL W or we can convert that to a single concentrated load WL. At our left hand end, which we're calling A, we will have R, A, Y. We can ignore the X direction. And at our right hand end, which we call B, we have the reaction R, B, Y. So if we take the sum of the forces in the Y direction, we will get capital W, which equals little w times L. So we will get that this force going in the downwards direction, little w times L, is equal to the forces moving in the upwards direction. So RAY plus RBY. And we can either, by inspection and the symmetry of the problem, or by taking moments about another point to generate another equation, we can find that RAY equals RBY, which equals little WL divided by 2. And we can now use those reactions to write our bending moment function. the bending moment function. So to write our bending moment function again, we need to draw a free body diagram of the system we're considering. So we're going from the left-hand side of the beam, which we've called A, and we're gonna make a cut at some point along the beam and identify the forces and moments that could be acting on this beam. So we have RAY, we have the UDL, which again, we can convert to a concentrated load, which might make our lives easier. We could have 
a shear force, let's call this V, capital V at point X, and let's not confuse shear force V with little V for deflection, so let's make sure that this definitely looks like a capital. And the other force or moment we can have is a moment M of X at the point where we make a cut. So this is the moment that acts on the left-hand side of the beam that comes from the right-hand side of the beam. And finally, to complete our free body diagram, we need to add some geometry. So we know that this distance is the distance X from the left-hand side or the distance X from the point where we're looking at back to the reaction. And therefore, the distance to the concentrate, the equivalent concentrated point load will be x upon 2. So now we can write by taking moments about point x, so take moments about x, we can write our bending moment function. So if we identify the two counterclockwise or anticlockwise moments about the point x we have the moment x plus the concentrated load which we now can say is w times the distance x gives us the total load on this portion of the beam that we're considering so we have w and black we have Wx multiplied by the lever arm, so the distance from the point we're considering to where the load is acting. So that is going to be x upon 2. So these are all of the anti-clockwise moments. And they're going to be equal to any clockwise moments on the system. So in this case, we're going to have the reaction force Ray multiplied by the lever arm from the point we're considering and that is a distance x. So we're going to tidy this function up and make m of x, make it all as a function m of x equals something. So let's tidy this up and we know what ray is. So we get that the moment as a function of the distance x going along the beam, so we should state that this x going along the beam is our coordinate system equals so we have r a y which we've already calculated to be w l upon 2 multiplied by the lever arm x minus as we take this onto this side w x squared upon 2 so now we have a function for the bending moment as a distance along the beam x. Armed with this function for the bending moment as a function of the distance along the beam, we're now going to write down equations in terms of d2v by dx squared. So just scroll down slightly to remind ourselves. So rotation and deflection functions. So first of all, just quickly remind ourselves the formula that we need to use. So we've got d2v by dx squared equals m over ei. So we can write, I'm going to take this EI over to the left hand side and we can write that EI D2V by DX squared is equal now to our moment function. So this is M of X. So that was WLX upon 2 minus wx squared upon 2. And we're going to take this function now and integrate it once to get a function for theta. So, integrate 
to get function for theta. So E I D V by D X, which equals E I theta is now equal to the integral of W L X upon two minus W X squared upon two all over D X. So this is equal to W L X squared upon four minus W X cubed upon six plus a constant of integration that I'm going to call C1. At this moment in time, we haven't evaluated what C1 is. I'm now going to integrate again to get a function for V. So for the deflection, V. So E I V is equal to the integral of W L X squared upon four minus W X cubed upon six plus C one, all integrated over D X. So that will give us term at a time so we get w l x cubed upon 12 minus w x to the 4 upon 24 plus c 1 x plus another constant of integration c 2 so to complete our equations for the deflection V or the rotation theta, we need to be able to identify the constants of integration C1 and C2. So let's quickly say what we're doing. Identify constants of integration. So what we need to do is go back to our original problem and see what we actually know about this problem that will help us identify these constants. So we had a UDL across the top and just sketching the deformed shape. What we can see straight away, that is that A or B so at A, X is equal to naught. We know that V, the deflection must be equal to naught. We can also say that at X equals L, so position B. But again, the deflection V would be equal to zero. So we're gonna use that straight away. So if we know at A or X equal to zero, we can see if we look at our function for for our deflections, let's scroll back down. We have a term with x cubed. So if x is equal to zero, that would disappear. We have a term with x to the four, which would also disappear if x is zero. We have c1x, which would also disappear. And that would leave us with e i zero must be equal to c2 and so all of the left hand side becomes zero and therefore c2 is equal to zero we're also going to use the second bit of information that we've identified so at b or x is equal to l we know that the deflection equals to zero and we're going to use that fact again in this equation so this 
left hand side becomes zero. Just delete these and rewrite our function. So we have so EIV zero equals and we'll substitute wherever we had x we're now going to substitute that x is equal to l so we have w l to the 4 upon 12 minus w l to the 4 upon 24 minus c1 l plus c2 which we now know to be 0 and we can rearrange all of this in terms of C1. And we find that C1 is equal to minus WL cubed upon 24. And therefore we can finally write a function for the deflections. So armed with C1 and C2. Reminding ourselves, we had a function EIV equals WLX cubed upon 12 minus WX to the 4 upon 24 plus C1X. We now know C1 plus C2 that we know is equal to 0. And we're going to substitute the known values for C1 and C2 back into this formula. And so we can write that our deflection as a function of X let's make sure that that's a small v so as not to confuse it with the shear force equals one over e i which i've now taken back to the right hand side all multiplied by w l x cubed upon 12 minus w x to the 4 upon 24 minus W L cubed X upon 24 and we could apply this equation at any position X along the beam one thing that we might want to do though is work out where V max occurs so V again let's use a little V so as not to confuse with shear force so Vmax, we know from intuition for this problem that it would occur at the middle of the beam, so when x equals to L upon 2. Or, if we cannot determine where that position is intuitively, then we can always use the min or max using... differentiation which is the same as calculating when theta is equal to zero so moving along evaluating this point we get so e i v max is equal to w l L upon 2 cubed all upon 12 minus W L upon 2 to the power 4 upon 24 minus W L cubed times by L upon 2 all divided by 24 so Let's do the multiplications out, so we get W L to the 4 upon 96 minus W L to the 4 upon 384 minus W L to the 4 upon 48. And so we have everything in terms of W out to the 4. And all we need to do is find a common 
uh, denominator, in which case it turned out to be 384. And therefore we can write that V max equals minus 1 upon EI, and I'm using this to say that it's going downwards, multiplied by 5 upon 384 times WL to the 4. And this is quite a common formula, not quite worthy of a black box, but definitely a formula that you will half remember for most of your careers. And it's a very quick way that you can calculate the deflection of a beam without having to repeat all of this procedure. So there are common formulas that tend to remember as engineers. So a UDL on a beam, a point load on a beam, a point load on a cantilever. that are standard formulas that engineers use to quickly get a ballpark answer for the deflections of standard structures. We're going to leave this video here. We're not doing the rotations in this example, but we will do in a later example.